Let's compile the Hello World app. Go to GitHub and download the repository. You can either get the zip file or use git clone. I like to use git clone, so I go to the terminal and create a directory for it. Verify that we have downloaded everything and then go back to Android Studio. Import the project into Android Studio. Choose the top level directory Android Hello World. It may ask you to register the VC at root. That just means that we will have version control integration. Go ahead and add that. After that, open the project tab from the left and choose the project perspective. This will reflect your file with the same structure as on disk. We will look into the actual code later. First, let's get it running on the emulator. To do that, we will need to create an emulator. Click on this purple button. To create a virtual device, we need to decide the size, resolution, and density. At this point, it doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to choose the first one. Next, we need to decide what operating system to load onto our emulator. Choose the highest API level. In this example, we have Marshmallow level 23. Within Marshmallow, there are two variants. The one that says with Google APIs and the one without. Choose with Google API so that it will come with things like Google Maps. Within that, you still have three choices, two of which is the x86 architecture and one is the ARM architecture. In general, the x86 version runs faster. So which one out of those to pick? That depends on whether you have a 32-bit machine or a 64-bit machine. To find out, use the terminal. You can launch the system terminal or you can use the one integrated with Android Studio. Let me show you how. Close the Virtual Device Manager and go to the bottom to open Terminal. Type uname-a. In our example, it says x86 underscore 64, meaning that this is a 64-bit machine. We can go ahead and choose to download that version. This will take a while. Once the download finishes, you can go ahead and use that particular system image in your emulator. After the emulator has been created, go ahead and launch it. I'm going to put the emulator side by side with Android Studio so you can see what happens. To compile and run our app, click the green triangle. Here you can see that Android Studio has detected that we have an emulator running. I usually check the box so that we use the same device all the time and I don't have to choose a device every single time. Here we are, hello world. Next, let's try to run the same app on a real device. To deploy your app to a real device, we need to enable developer options so that we can turn on USB debugging. Go to settings. Scroll all the way down until you see about phone. Go to about phone. Scroll all the way down to build number. Tap build number seven times. It will tell you that you are now a developer. Go back and tap on Developer Options. Switch it on. Scroll down to enable USB debugging. With all that, we can go back to Android Studio and plug in the phone. To double check that everything is set up properly, I am going to show you how to use ADB or Android Debug Bridge. Go to Android Studio, Preferences, and search for Android. 
Copy the path of the SDK. Then go to the terminal, paste in the path of the SDK, and add platform tools slash ADB. If you are on Windows, add adb.exe. This is the full path of the ADB command. If you are going to do a lot of Android development, you may want to add that to your path. ADB is very handy to figure out the status of your app and your device. After ADB, press space devices. Before you plug in your phone, it will show nothing. Now let's plug in our phone. A dialog will show up on your phone asking you if you trust this computer. Check the checkbox and click OK. Then run ADB devices again. This time, you should see your phone. With that, you can click the green triangle again. This time, instead of the emulator, you will see your device in the device chooser. Here we go, hello world on your phone.